part two now, and we're gonna move on to painting the horns. And we're gonna go from light to dark, which is the opposite of what I normally do. That's because the horns just come straight out of the head. There's no socket or anything that they're obviously coming out of. So I wanna begin with a lighter color, similar in tone to the skin tone. And began with a light, a uh, couple light layers of Vallejo Game Color Bone. And uh, I wanted some of the purple for the, from the skin to still show through. So there was a somewhat subtle transition between the colors and not a stark straight line. And to the bone, I've added some uh, Vallejo Model Color English Uniform. And this is done in several layers, about a dozen coats at least. Uh, letting each coat dry and then adding a bit more English uniform on top and moving our way towards the uh, tips of the uh, tops of the horns and so we get a nice subtle transition I'm not showing all the steps here because it's a lot of steps and it would take forever But once we hit straight English uniform, then I start mixing in some Vallejo model color uh, camo black brown and continue the work up towards the uh, actual uh, tips of the horns. And then after several more layers of mixing more and more camo black brown into the English uniform, we finally work our way up to straight camo black brown for the very tippy tops of the horns. And then we finish off by putting a wash over the horns because they are textured and they do need some extra shade. And that's accomplished by using some Vallejo brown shade, um, which also helps to blend all the colors together that we just used to paint the horns. Now on to the clothing areas. And I wanted to keep this paint scheme fairly simple, not branch out into too many colors, and also I wanted something dark. So started off with undercoating by undercoating with black. And over the black, I am highlighting with Vallejo game color hexed lichen. Then I mixed in a little bit of Vallejo model color blue violet in with the hexed lichen and I'm adding a second highlight where necessary on the cloth areas. And then finally we finish up with a wash of Army Painter purple tone and the tone will tint the black areas, give them a slight purple hue while still allowing the lighter color purple areas, the highlights to still show through. So we have a, a very dark blackish tone, but it still has, it has a bit of color in it, but it is very subtle. For the armor, we're starting off with Vallejo uh, model air steel color. And then we're gonna apply the shade to that through a series of ink washes. And starting off with a mix of Vallejo model color, excuse me, Vallejo game color, black and blue ink, slightly thinned. And we're beginning in the recesses, just carefully putting a line of shade wherever the panels overlap. And then once that was dry, mixed up a slightly thinner version of that previous blue black ink mix and start bringing the color down a little bit further down into uh, more of the uh, flatter panels on the armor, uh, trying to put some into, uh, give some definition to some of the slight recesses, the curves on the armor. And this is a slow process where you're gonna build up the layers, slowly letting each layer dry uh, in between. Uh, I think the total is about three layers. At this point, I felt the paint scheme needed a few brighter colors, and so we're gonna paint some of the armor bits in gold. And we're starting off with Vallejo Model Air Rust, 
which I just started using for gold, and it's a, a very nice base for building up a good bright gold color. Once that is dry, we move on to a 50-50 mix of the previous rust color mixed with Vallejo Game Color Glorious Gold. And with that done, we could then transition up to straight Vallejo Game Color Glorious Gold. And then finally, an edge highlight of Glorious Gold mixed with some Vallejo Model Air Silver. And remember, the key to painting gold is don't over highlight it. If you over highlight it, it still it starts looking too silvery. So um, just a little bit of silver mixed into the Glorious Gold and we're just hitting the edges of the plates. Around this point, I started really struggling with the paint scheme here. It, everything was just looking too dull. If there was more detail on the model, I'd have something to brighten up. Um, but I was just having issues with it. And originally, all the straps holding the armor in place, I painted with my standard brown colors. Uh, base color of Leho Model Color Flat Earth. But it just didn't add to the miniature. It just looked too dull. So I had to go back and repaint all the straps with Vallejo Game Color Magic Blue and with a little white added for the highlights. And that really helped to brighten up the miniature, replacing that dull brown with a fairly bright colored blue. And it really added to the scheme. And of course, then it carries over the blue color that's already in the skin. So just changing one color out um, really improved the miniature overall. The sword I was originally planning on painting a standard steel sword scheme. However, again, remembering that this miniature really needs extra details to make it stand out, uh, decided to go with something else. So we're starting off with Vallejo Game Color Royal Purple. To the Royal Purple, I added a little bit of white and began working on a sort of glowing pattern. I'm not sure what I would call this, but the paint is uh, thinned out and my brush is a little bit more moist than normal. Um, almost like I'm going to be wet blending this together. But just working on the edges of the sword and also the center area. So um, where the edges start, basically we're working our way away from uh, the top of the edges, working our way down and then also towards the center of the sword. I repeated this process about four times, adding more white each time, and just every time working on a slightly smaller and smaller area in order to get this, for back, lack of a better word, this glowing effect to the sword. And here we are applying the last highlight to the sword, the last regular highlight. Again, adding more white each time and again working on a smaller area. I did finish this off by uh, adding one final edge highlight with a, uh, a bit more white added just to the edges of the sword. After painting the sword, all I had to do was paint some details here and there and finish off the miniature. And what you see right now is the finished results. Uh, the base work still needs to be done. Uh, I will be adding grass at a later state. Um, overall, the miniature uh, came out pretty good. Uh, again, the issue I have with this model is just there's not a lot of detail on it. Also, as I was continuing to work on it after shooting the initial review portion of the video, um, I kept finding more and more holes and little defects that needed to be fixed. So uh, trying to get this miniature into perfect shape is extremely difficult. You kind of just have to 
deal with some seam lines and some gaps and holes here and there because you'll spend weeks trying to fill everything. Um, also, the paint scheme was coming out really dull to begin with, but making a few changes really helped, adding the blue straps and also um, changing the uh, where the gold armor was. You can see on the breastplate, I kind of went back and forth on what color to paint it. End up going with gold with some uh, steel trim around it, which again added detail to it. And uh, changing it to gold also helped to brighten up the overall paint scheme of the miniature. But uh, with, with that, we will uh, close this video. And as always, thanks for watching.